Good evening, everybody. Welcome to DNS Live. It's Wednesday night. Uh, we're kind of getting some things put together tonight, so we'll go over a couple of announcements. I'm kind of worn out. We've got our charity event coming up this weekend, so we've been wrapping up some last-minute things for you guys. So if you have not gotten your tickets yet, let's just start at the very beginning. We are doing a charity dinner and investigation Saturday night at the porch in Burleson. We've combined the two nights into one. Uh, it's going to be a little bit easier for people. Friday night seemed to have been a little bit of a struggle for some people to get in from out of town, so we are changing it to Saturday night. You can get your tickets online at DFW. Uh, what is it? DFW Dinner Ghost Hunt dot Eventbrite.com. Sorry, I didn't write it down. I've been copying and pasting all day. I think I, you think I know it by now. It's sixty-five dollars for your ticket online. If you're an NPS member, it's fifty-five. If you get your ticket at the door, it will be $75. So you want to make sure you get them online. We will be giving $5 off if you bring two, gan two canned goods for you that we're going to give away to a local shelter. We're going to team up with a local grocery store there. Um, and again, it'll be $10 off for NPS members at the door. Um, if you can bring cash, that'd be great. Otherwise, you're going to be stopping at an ATM because we have no way to accept credit cards. So keep that in mind. Um, we will be doing dinner at 7 o'clock, and I heard we're going to be having some badass chicken fried steak. Um, and, Digan, do you remember what else we were going to have? It was the chicken fried steak, chicken fried chicken, and I think a grilled chicken, right? And so, yeah, you guys, we're going to have to talk Giovanni into this chicken fried bacon. It was so good. But anyway, we'll have a pretty good buffet there. Um, and then after that, we'll have all of our speakers. We're going to have them in two different rooms. And then we will start off with our investigation. Um, we will have lotto tickets on sale from the time that you get there to just before the investigation starts, and we'll also have a silent auction. And we've got lots and lots of cool stuff that's been donated to us for this, so you guys can check that out. Um, during the investigation, starting at 10 o'clock, you guys, we're going to go live with DNS Live on location. Um, bring you a little bit of that. You get to watch some of the camera footage, and then we're also going to talk with uh, Mike Roberts and some of the other speakers uh, during the night and kind of do a little interview for that. So. We're waiting on kids. Kids are going to send us some brochures. They ran out of banners, I heard today, but they are going to be pushing our event on their website, so you guys can check it out there as well. Um, so you guys come out and support a really good charity, Kids Kids. We've got some bad news in, in our family last night, so it, it's kind of the, the meaning for why we do what we do with uh, Deegan's niece and the, the news we received of her brain cancer last night. So you guys come out and help us support our charity. Um, we are on the 21st, so... Um, not next week, but the following week, on Saturday the 21st, we are going to be filming our show live at the Big Hotel Ghost Walk. So you guys need to get out if you want to be on the show. We're going to interview some people from the crowd. Um, and we're going to have some really cool little handouts for you guys when we're there. But we are going to do the Ghost Walk. Um, we are going to film it. I think the walk lasts about an hour and a half. Um, not quite two hours, probably about an hour and a half. You will walk a 10-block radius, so make sure you do wear comfortable shoes. Um, but our focus is going to be on the ghost walk um, on the Baker that night. You will get to go over by um, the Crazy Water Hotel. We won't be able to go inside of it, just like we're not going inside the Baker. But when Deegan and I were there, what was that, two weeks ago? Yeah, it was about two weeks ago that we were there. We did get some activity out on the mezzanine. So even not going in the building, you're going to get some activity. So you guys show up for that. Um, we are going to do that again at September 21st on a Saturday night. And we are going to air that show so you can watch yourself. That one is going to be aired on October 9th, so you'll be able to uh, see your goofy self on the camera. Um, other than that, the only thing that I wanted to add to announcements is our prayer list tonight. If you guys can keep Jalen in your prayers, Deegan's niece, and if you'll also keep baby Cohen in your prayers. Um, he's doing really well. Uh, Shondi had put up an update, so I guess it was yesterday, um, saying that he is really doing well. So you guys, let's just continue keeping him in our prayers, a um, little preemie baby. We will be selling cookies for Cohen on Saturday, so if you guys get a sweet tooth, we will have those available to raise some money for him as well. Um, and that is pretty much it. Eric, do we have our guest on yet? I'm still working on it. Yeah, so I get to stall a little bit. So, um, chat room, how are you guys doing tonight? We got anything we want to talk about in the chat room? I love flying by the seat of my pants. Uh, hey, Sherry. Um, yeah. When it comes to saturday night at the porch um, mm -hmm. who are all the speakers oh my gosh let's see if i can remember everybody right off the top of my head 
we are going to have two different rooms. So we're going to have a main room and a smaller room. So in the main room, we're going to have kicking it off Jason Gentry with PSI Investigators. He's here in Plano, Eric. <laughs> Is he on the right side of the highway? You know, we're going to have to ask him again. We had that conversation with him. Wasn't he on the... Uh, Shoot, I want to say he was on the... I think uh, he was on the west side, and that's why we liked him. Well, I think he was, like, in the middle. I think he was, like, west and not... Or, like, where the senior high is and not west. Does that make sense? Not on the east side. Not on my side. Not on my side. But anyway, we'll have Jason Gentry there, and he can tell us a lot about what's going on with him. I am. They did do a Channel 11 uh, Halloween episode special last year, and I think they're going to be gearing up and doing some more specials, and I know they're filming for a film right now, so he'll probably tell us about that. And then following him will be Mike Roberts, um, and you guys will get to meet Mike that night. And the first nine people through the door that donate $15 cash to Kids Kids will get an autograph book by Mike. And then he is going to be bringing autograph pictures of himself for everybody to have that night, so you guys won't miss out on that. Then in the smaller room, we're going to kick off the night with Ty Phillips. Uh, Ty's going to be talking about the fourth dimension, so it's very interesting you guys to sit here and hear him talk about it, it, it really opens your eyes and makes you think about things. I'm hoping he touches on the mapping experiment because to me I thought that was pretty cool, um, especially going into a location you've, you've never been into doing the mapping experiment. is is pretty awesome and it really makes you think outside the box. Um, following Ty will be Michael Graves, and you guys, we had Michael on the show. He is going to be bringing some of his pictures, um, his angel pictures, and, and sharing that with us. And his wife will be joining him to help with his display. And the man is kind enough to donate two of his books that will be autographed to our donation items as well. So you'll get to meet Michael and uh, talk with him a little bit about his pictures. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard, I'm sure everybody has by now, the Pride House burned uh, last week. And so he's going to share some of his pictures that he caught at the Pride House as well. Um, and then following him will be uh, Paul Coffey coming out or coming up from San Antonio. Um, Paul has been on My Ghost Story a couple of times and he's going to be sharing with us some of his experiences. Now, some of the speakers will have um, audio, vid audio visual type presentations and some of them won't. So I believe Ty's gonna have some presentations and I think Paul was gonna be bringing some as well. Uh, Michael's just gonna be bringing some displays. So you guys will get a chance from uh, seven to eight to eat and from eight to 10 to listen to some awesome speakers. And you can bounce back and forth between the two rooms. We're not gonna hold you to one room uh, for that. And then I will kick off the night Probably around 10 o'clock, uh, let you guys know a little bit about the location. Uh, we were out there last week and caught a little bit of activity. So we will tell you guys a little bit about that, uh, what to, to look for, not exactly what to expect, but what to look for. Um, and hopefully a lot of you guys have seen the light video that we posted on the crew page where we're going to be trying to debunk that. And I can tell you, we tried to debunk it last week and we have our own theory about what it was. So we're going to let you guys figure it out and see if y'all come up with what we came up with. Um, but we did have some activity on the pyramid, uh, the Paranology's pyramid last week. Um, and Mike had also brought out these really cool trigger objects uh, that actually click onto a trigger object. So if it's touched or moved, it goes off. So we did have some uh, results with those two um, experiments. The periscope, not so much, uh, but with the other two pieces of equipment we did, um, along with a, a sense and a feeling for you guys that, that can kind of pick up on that. Um, so we will go over that, and then we will do our silent auction. And then depending on the turnout, um, we may bust up into two groups and go from about 10.30 to about 12.30 and then take a break and then let another group go. And we may break up into three groups. Um, and I do know, you guys, that they do um, an official ghost walk in downtown Bedford, um, right around where the porch is. The ghost walk will not be going on during our event. We were trying to get that coordinated, but that didn't happen. Um, but there may be that we walk around the neighborhood and see if we get some stuff there as well. So when you guys find out the history of the porch and the residence that it used to be, you guys will be very intrigued with what we find. So that'll be really cool. Um, and then we'll wrap up the night probably about 2.30, 3 o'clock. Um, we'll talk about what everybody experienced. And then we will see how much we raise for kids' kids so we can be able to present that to them. Um, so it should be a really good night. Um, we've been working really hard on it, so I hope we have... A lot of people come out and help us debunk the video um, and also help the owner. I mean, this is the first time this location's being investigated, um, second to our little mini investigation last week, but it's going to be the first time it's officially investigated. So we need to let Giovanni know what we find. They've had, um, aside from just the, the light video, 
which has happened quite a few times with them. They've also had the uh, the cook came in early one morning and was by himself getting ready for breakfast to prepare stuff and was having macaroni thrown at him in the kitchen uh, and thought it was a co-worker walked around the, the restaurant, walked around outside. There was nobody there. So we've had some reports of some other stuff. We'll share the rest of it with you there at the investigation. But just know to bring some comfortable shoes. I know we're going to be inside, but if you guys want to walk around the neighborhood um, and get a feel for what's around there, you do want to wear some comfortable shoes. Make sure you bring a flashlight. You will need a flashlight, your digital camera, and a digital recorder if you have one. Other than that, uh, between DNS and FEAR, uh, there's enough Paranology's equipment that we should be able to let you guys experience those. And Jeremy will be there as well talking about Paranology's. And I think, I need to confirm with him, but I think we're going to get to see some of the new products that night. He's already launched a couple on the site, so hopefully we'll be able to play with a couple of those um, Saturday night as well and see if we can get a feel for that. Um, other than that, um, we really don't have any other. We're working on some other events for kids, kids. Um, can't let the cat out of the bag yet what we're working on, but we've got two more events we're trying to work on before the end of the year to help them raise money. Um, and that's about it. Oh, and I'm seeing Yeti. Do you see that note in the chat yeah. room? Yeah. Thank you, Carl, for popping in and letting us know Carl is a bear. He's a good friend. Has been for a long time. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe Sherry, maybe you should speak for a moment on what Kid Craddock meant to you and uh, kind of talk about why we're doing Kids yeah, Kids. Kind of, kind of what, what Kids Kids is because that's something he started after I left Dallas. Oh, wow. Yeah, he did do that for a while. You know, you guys, if you're from the DFW Metroplex and you don't know who Kid Craddock is, somebody needs to smack you upside the head. Because I can remember being a teenager in high school and listening to him on the Eagle at night. Um, and we thought he was just the coolest DJ ever. Um, and he did a lot of stuff. You know, he even started off on a good note before even finding kids, kids doing stuff for people and, and helping us really realize we need to thank people in our lives for stuff. And we need to recognize people and we need to be there for people. And, and he really not only paid it forward, but really practiced the golden rule. Um, and when he started Kids Kids, you know, there was nothing like it before that. And I honestly can't remember. God, I wish I could remember. He used to do a thing around Christmas time, and I can't remember what it was called. And I don't remember if it was before Kids Kids or in conjunction with it. But he used to do a thing at Christmas time where they would go and surprise a needy family and have the Christmas tree set up and the presents and all that fun stuff. Um, and I do remember that. And I remember listening to that and hating him because you cried every time you listened to it. Um, but he was a very generous person, a very generous soul, um, somebody we really should model ourselves after um, and model our children after. So with opening up Kids Kids, what the foundation basically does um, is assist families with children that have uh, terminal illnesses. Um, I want to kind of compare it to um, Make-A-Wish, um, but on a much different scale. Make-A-Wish reaches out there and probably has tons of connections that they're constantly doing the same type of Make-A-Wishes where Kids Kids is more really what um, the family and the kid needs and being that support. Um, you know, guys, we, we take life for granted and I'm probably going to go off on a soapbox here, but we take life for granted and, you know, just like with Shonda's baby, uh, with Cohen being born and, and being born early, you know, she's, she's just wanting to see her baby's eyes open. Um, she's just wanting to, you know, see his heartbeat, watch him breathe. She just is ready to take him home. And there's those of us that go to the hospital, we have a child, we bring the child home and we get to enjoy um, breastfeeding and, and um, being with our child and bonding with our child. And, and here you've got families that, you know, can't do that with their child. <clears throat> and you've got some that have, you know, like Deegan's niece, Jay Lynn. Again, you know, mine and Deegan's reason for getting involved with kids, kids. You've got the kids that develop a cancer. Um, Jay Linton's was a stage four brain cancer that came on immediately. Um, they were able to operate on one of the tumors, but not on the one on her brain stem. And they did some chemotherapy and some treatment with her. And we found out um, during this week's MRI that it has grown and there's nothing more they can do for her. So they're gonna let her live her life as a little girl. She's gonna go back to school and they're gonna quit putting her like a little bubble um, around her and let her live life until there is no more life for her to live. So. You know, when it touches home like that and you've got a charity like Kids Kids to reach out to, you guys, the least that we can do 
is help these foundations out and help these charities out. Their families can't afford some of the treatments. Their families can't afford to take care of their kids. You know, and these kids deserve to have a life. I mean, they're they're not on the earth that long, not as long as we are. You know, we're in our 40s, so we've had a chance to experience life. But these kids, they can't do that. Kids Kids helps them, helps their families, um, helps them with, with so much that it's almost selfish for us not to be able to donate back. So we're doing kind of what we love um, with ghost hunting. Yeah, you may be 39-ish, but you're going to be hitting 40. I see you guys in the chat room. Um, you know, you guys, we do what we love. We we love going out ghost hunting. You guys know me. I've done a lot of public investigations. We've raised money for breast cancer before. Um, I think the DNS charity of choice from here on out is going to be Kids Kids just because of the impact that, you know, has been made on our lives for a, a need like that. Um so, yeah, you'll see us doing a lot for kids, kids. I'm not sure exactly what else we're going to be doing. I do know, but I can't tell you guys. But, you know, if you guys want to come out and support a charity, I can't think of a better one. And especially being here in the Metroplex, I mean, who doesn't know Kid Craddock? And who doesn't want to do something to honor his memory and do something for him? Um, I think it's something that he'd be looking down upon us from heaven and thanking us for doing it. So I hope the charity grows. Um, I, I hope that at one point they can expand and they can do more. Um, but to get there, we've got to be able to give and, and do our donations and do our part as well. So I encourage you guys, you know, if you can't make it out Saturday night, go buy a t-shirt online. I think they're 20 or 25 bucks. I mean, go buy a, a kid's kid's t-shirt. I'm waiting. We're going to um, hopefully have a ticker uh, going Saturday night with an online link where you guys can actually make donations online during our show. Um, and we can put everything together to be able to present to them and be able to say that, you know, the paranormal community here in the Dallas Metroplex was able to pull this together for them. So if you guys um, miss it, you can watch it online. You can still donate. Um, a lot of people were saying that we're charging a little bit too much. And my only answer back to you is we're doing this for charity. And I really don't think it's too much when we're helping out another child or we're helping out another family that may or may not be here by the time Saturday comes around. May or may not be here for Christmas. Um, this may be their last Christmas. So you guys, let's don't be selfish when we're looking at these type of things. Diva forgot to ask you for a donation. Well, you still have time, Robin. You can get it in. Thanks, Bear. Yeah, we'll, we'll be on for a little bit. So did you see that, Eric? Yeah. All right, so we're good. Um, what are you guys doing in the chat room tonight? We've got a lot of livelies going on here. I saw you guys talking about some stuff. Yeah, y'all are just playing around in the chat room. See that with Robin. Robin donated a $50 reading gift certificate to be given away. Nice. Nice. Hey, Robin, message me your contact information on Facebook so I can get that together. That'd be awesome. Thank you so much. You know, you guys, our stuff, Saturday night. Okay, so I can probably let the cat out of the bag a little bit. We have two tickets to Bobby Mackey's that are on their way. I haven't gotten them yet from our friend Jason. Um, we have autographed books. Um, we are gonna have a four pack of tickets for the Baker Hotel Ghost Walk for the night that we're filming. So there's no excuse for you to miss that. Um, I'm trying to think what else is on our list. Let me see if I can pull it up. We can go through some stuff. We've got haircuts, guys. I mean, so it's not just paranormal stuff. We've got haircuts. We have got um, personal training sessions. Um, let's see, what else do I have on my list? Oh, we've got two tickets to the Granbury Ghost and Legends Tour that Brandy gave us over there. Um, we've got a four-pack general admission tickets to the Haunted Springs Paranormal Fest in Hot Springs coming up October 5th. Um, let's see, we've got quite a few readings from um, some of our favorite psychics that have donated and wanted to help out. So you guys will be able to have a chance at those. Um, we've got quite a few books. I'm trying to just kind of glance over the top. Quite a few autographed pictures. Mike Roberts is bringing some too, so we're gonna have some really fun stuff there. Um, we will have, um, and I've still gotta go pick him up. I'm glad I'm looking at this. We will have $40 in gift cards to La Madeline. And I swear to God, if nobody else wins them, I'm just gonna go flat out and take and donate and have them because I haven't had La Madeline since I left there. That's so bad. Um, we're gonna have some Jamba Juice gift cards. We're gonna have a gift card to Jasper's, you guys here in the Metroplex. Jasper's awesome, awesome food. Um, and then to get you into the holiday spirit and kind of get you going for our November event with 
um, what's it called again? Haunted Holiday. Yep. Marshall, City of Marshall, Texas, Haunted Holiday. In Marshall, you guys were going to be there. So to kind of lead into that, we've got the holiday, a 16-piece holiday dinner set and a 14-inch crystal holiday platter. Um, that'll get you guys kind of in the spirit for that and get you going into November's event. So make sure you guys come out for that. Um, and then we're going to have, there were some DVDs that were donated. Um, we've got a one-hour photo shoot with a photographer. I mean, come on, guys. We've got some really cool stuff. Um, for those Scentsy fans, we will have a Scentsy warmer set available. Um, Fair Paranormal has donated two of their brand new badass embroidered caps um, and a paranormal, uh, one of their paranormal tees, their Fear Paranormal tees. Um, and then they've also donated some Cowboys t-shirts, which I probably should have pulled my rank and got some Cowboys stuff, but I've been busy trying to get this thing together. Um, and let's see. Now, those of you who want to go out again and investigate, Afterlife Research Team Art has donated a one-time guest investigator pass. And DNS, we here at DNS have matched that. And we're going to also offer a one-time guest investigator pass. And for those of you who want to sit here with me and co-host the show, you're actually going to get an opportunity to be able to um, auction for that, too. So you can sit here and either run the show for me, which I'd like to see, or you can co-host with me and we can go from there. Um, so we've got a lot of stuff, a lot of lot of stuff um, coming up, and you know we're still we're still taking in donations as you can see tonight with Robin. We're still taking in stuff, um, and then yes, Kim, I can't wait to see that. We've got an amethyst necklace, and I'm hoping I win that one too to go with my amethyst dowser. So we have got a lot of stuff coming in. I um, really just can't wait. Just can't wait to see everything all together and pull it all together. Um, and it'll be fun. We, we'll have some lotto tickets. I can't remember. Kelly's working all that for us. Um, the lotto tickets and how much those are going to be, but they're not going to be very expensive. And you get to scratch and win them just like you do a lottery ticket. So you'll know right then and there what you've won. Um, and then, like I said, we'll do the silent auction on some other items. Um, and we'll announce that shortly before we investigate. Uh, yeah. Eric, do not forget that necklace Saturday. Man, it's a how could a man not want two wives? <laughs> you know what? Isn't there a Cowboys game on Saturday? Yeah, but it's okay. I mean, I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they won't win it. Well, who are they playing? The Giants, I think. Oh yeah, they've never won against the Giants at home, so we're good. Yeah, we're good. My yeah. man John Bon Jovi will be out there watching that. That's his team. He loves the Giants, so yeah, definitely don't have to worry about that one. Hey, they're turning the Texas Stadium into the tornado shelter. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah there's never been a touchdown. Never been a touchdown oh, there. so bad. That's hilarious, though. I love it. The AT&T Stadium, I'm still going to call it Jerry's World. I don't care. Whatever. Whatever, whatever. What else do we have coming up? Um, What do y'all have going on? We've only got haunted holidays we're getting ready for, right? Well, that's that's enough. <laughs> You know what? After planning this event Saturday night and working on it for six or seven weeks, you know, I do this kind of stuff for a living on a corporate level, but to do it on a, and I'm going to say a smaller level, but I, I don't want it to sound like it's something smaller. It's like I'm pulling teeth to get some stuff done. Right. But it's, I guess when you work for a corporation, you got money to throw around. It makes it a little bit easier. Well, and, and it, the other thing to remember too is, I mean, in, in this economy, it's, it's hard on everybody. And when it comes to the, par especially the paranormal, I know, I, yeah, a lot of people spend either all their money on equipment or um, we were all middle management and we're underemployed or, I mean, it, but it, the whole yep. fact, the whole fact that, that you guys are stepping up to do it, that's awesome, Sherry. I mean, it, it, it's the paranormal giving back to the community. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you guys, you know, just to kind of take off on that. We're not making a dime off of this. I actually had, oh my God, I'm going to go on my soapbox. I actually had some asshole email me when we first started this to ask me if we had a tax ID number and if we were going to be reporting this income. I guess people don't know how to read that the proceeds are going to the charity. Aside from paying for the restaurant, because they are closing for us, aside from paying for them, for paying for the location, everything else is going to Kids Kids, guys. We're doing this. We are donating our time, and we are doing this for the charity. 
So if you guys think that we're doing this to make money, you're out of your freaking mind. I wouldn't be bending over backwards to do something like this if I didn't think it was a good cause. And I damn sure wouldn't be donating my time for six weeks to get it done. So you guys need to remember when we're doing this stuff, there may be other teams out there that will make a buck or two off of it doing their events or doing their, and, and we know, you guys know there's been events that have been held that haven't gone through and you've lost out on money, but we, you know, we wouldn't be doing that. Um, I, I think it's much easier to, to give my time because I believe in paying it forward and I believe in karma. I believe good things do come back to you. So I definitely challenge any other teams out there, guys, step it up and let's start doing some stuff for these charities. I mean, it's getting ready to be Christmas time. We're going to have the Salvation Army tree coming up. We're going to have, um, what else is around Christmas? I always think about Salvation Army tree, the Toys for Tots. We're going to have all of that. So I challenge you guys. I mean, this is an official challenge now from DNS. And I know Fear has my back and I know Torch has my back. You guys, I challenge you to get out there and do something for these charities. Go out there and, and challenge yourself to see what you can raise for Toys for Tots or to see how many angels you can adopt or how many gifts you can get for those angels. I mean, these kids really need us. And right now is the time to do it. Thanksgiving. Go adopt a freaking family and give them Thanksgiving dinner. Guys, pull together as a team and try to buy one. You know, you guys can reach out to a lot of the shelters and a lot of the communities and find some of those families that are needy and they don't have enough money to even have Thanksgiving to buy a turkey. Um, go out there and help some of the, the, what is it, the food pantries and the shelters when they're serving Thanksgiving dinner. I mean, I really want to put a challenge out there to the paranormal community. Let's step it up, guys. I mean, we enjoy doing what we're doing and ghost hunting and going out there researching and investigating, but... You know, I think if we give back to the community, it's going to have the community look at us in a better light. We already have enough of a challenge and enough drama in our community. Let's start doing something good and see if we can change that and turn that around. Well, so. that is one thing that I did want to mention real quick, Sherry, because at the Marshall Haunted Holidays this year, there is, there will be a cash, a $2 re-cash refund given at the door if you bring canned goods. At least two. That's at least so two easy to do. And then we're going to give it to the local Marshall Marshall Food Bank down there. Yeah, there's a um, there's a food bank that the um, oh, and I'm drawing a blank. The little grocery store around the corner from the porch in Burleson. It's the city something, but they uh, once a month do a, a canned food drive. So we're going to take our canned food and, and give it right there back to the local community there in Bedford. So. You know, I think it's something easy. You guys, I mean, come on, you can go pick up a can of green beans for 69 cents, get 10 of them, and bring them in. I mean, it's worth getting a $2 refund, but to me, it's worth helping somebody else. Until you've been in that situation, you don't know how much people appreciate that kind of thing, and especially going into the holidays. You know, it's sad to see people not being able to celebrate Thanksgiving because they can't afford to put food on the table, um, and they can't celebrate Christmas because they can't afford to buy their kids gifts, so... You know, I know everybody struggles, and I know we all go paycheck to paycheck, but damn, you know, five bucks can go a long way sometimes, guys. So let's just, let's keep that in mind going. I can't believe we're talking about going into the holiday season, but we are. I mean, it's September school started. Sherry, so let's think about that. I would like to mention, too, that anybody in Louisiana or East Texas who can't, unfortunately, make it to your event this weekend, in Kilgore this Saturday, they're having cookies for Cohen. They're having a fundraiser in Kilgore for the baby. Yep. We're going to have cookies all day long on Saturday all over the state because Becca and I need to check on Becca and see how that baking's going. She was supposed to be baking our cookies for Saturday so I'm going to have to check with our team and make sure we've got our cookies going. So we definitely want to do that for Cohen as well. And you guys y'all can keep up with him on Facebook too uh, and, and his status there. But I think we've got a lot of good stuff going on. I, I think teams maybe need to start stepping up it's getting to be cooler out um and i think we'll be getting out more i know i think uh dns will start picking it back up we, we got a little bit going in september um i probably need to start filling october more but we've got um i've got a work event coming up in las vegas so um, i'm trying to get up to get together with some teams there um and go do some investigating while i'm there so However much equipment I can fit on the plane without getting in trouble, I'm going to take with me. I think the tri -cam will be staying at home, but I can take some other things. Um, and I know we're looking at, I believe, November. I think we're going to try to go back to the jail. We'll see about that. 
haven't been to the jail in a while and it's always better when it's cold. And then I have December wide open. So, you know, you guys, if you want to do a, a challenge and go out and investigate, let's let's do a challenge, go investigate, and let's see if we can't uh, bring some other people in and maybe do something for, I don't know, kids' kids or a local shelter or something, see what we can do. I challenge everybody to, to get out there and start doing some public investigations at some local haunts and see if we can pull together some stuff, whether it's, it's going to be breast cancer month next month, so we can do that. And then in November and December, we can start focusing on kids and needy families and see what we can do. So I'm going to put a challenge out to the crew for kids on that as well. I know we're working on two events. One may not happen until after the first of the year because it's going to be something pretty big being organized. Um, and then I know we're doing something around uh, the Christmas time uh, for kids too. So you'll see that come up. Um, but in the meantime, doesn't mean that we can't keep giving wherever you guys can give. So. What else? I'm trying to think what else we want to talk about. Oh, guys, okay. So here's something cool and kind of off the beaten path. Let's talk about the Baker and talk about the Ghost Walk. Um, the Baker Hotel, I've been doing some research on it, and there is just some phenomenal stuff on that hotel. Phenomenal. You guys need to go out on YouTube and search. I believe it's just Ballad of the Baker. I don't think it's the Ballad. I don't think these in it. I think it's just Ballad of the Baker. Um, and it's a little trailer on Ballad of the Baker, which is an independent film coming out, not just about the Baker, but about Mineral Wells. And it talks about how Mineral Wells was kind of saved by the Baker back in the Depression and bringing jobs and, and bringing the community to life. And it's the most interesting film because they actually interview people that grew up in Mineral Wells and remember when the Baker was open. And, you know, the Baker was open for a while. I think a couple of years ago they closed it to internal tours because of the way that the building is. But you actually get to go in from this videographer's viewpoint and see the Baker. And it's just, if you're an architectural buff like me, my dad was an architect, so I'm always going to have that that take on buildings that we go to. And you'll see DNS going to more historical locations um, than anything just because of that. But you can actually see how well made that place is you know it's it's pretty stable they're not letting people in because there are still some areas of it that really aren't safe you've got broken glass and that type of thing but to see the architectural detail of this hotel is amazing um they actually show two men playing guitar and singing in the amphitheater at the baker and i didn't even realize there was an amphitheater there and it's still in fairly good condition to be as old as it is and for that hotel to be closed for going on 40 years so that's pretty cool. Um, they show the cloud room, which is really neat, the, the room upstairs. Um, I just really wish they would have shown like the bowling alley. Did you guys know it had a bowling alley um, and the gym? And for some of you history buffs, you may or may not know this. If you look at the baker, you'll see the baker over on one side on its own little corner. It's got shops and so forth. And the corner actually faces the street. And then you have to go across a little walkway. And there's a cute little bridge that goes over where the pool is. Well. The pool is, if you look at it from one aspect, it's kind of built up in a yard, right? But when you go around, you actually see that there's a drive to go underneath it, and there's actually something underneath it. Well, when they first started building the Baker, that was the location they were building it on. So the pool actually sets on the original foundation for the Baker. So there is a basement down there from when they started building it. Well, Mr. Baker went traveling, and I believe it was in California, and saw a hotel with a pool. I thought that was really cool because that just wasn't known back then. I mean, how many of us go traveling now and we, we don't get a hotel without a pool? But it was not heard of back then. And he decided he wanted a pool in the Baker. So they ended up changing the plans for the Baker to accommodate that pool, which I think is really, really cool. Everybody seems to think that the bowling alley is underneath the pool or the parking garage is under the pool. That's not the case. Now, I'm still trying to figure out where the garage was because I want to know if we can get some activity in the garage as well as being around the pool and being around the baker. So I think that's really cool. And I know that um, all of this was put out, uh, I believe it was in 2010, um, when new management and new ownership took over the baker. They were hoping by 2013, y'all, they were hoping by this fall to have had that thing remodeled and opened again, and it hasn't happened. Um, they're looking for some financial backing to get that going. So let's kind of keep an eye on the news for that. And if there's something we can do community-wise to help that along, Let's get the word out there about that when we see it, because I think bringing the Baker back to life, not only is it going to help the city of Mineral Wells, but you guys have no idea that Mammoth Hotel, what it stands for, not just from a paranormal aspect, because, I mean, it's, yeah, it's got activity and it's crazy, 
but just for the fact of what it is, um, the fact that that hotel was built in the depression, it just has its own history um, and has its own fun about it. So you guys check it out, Ballad of the Baker. Um, and there's also one that's called the Restoration, the first walkthrough restoration video or something like that. You guys can see a lot about it there too. And it'll give you a real good appreciation for the building. And, you know, being a paranormal investigator, the best thing is, is going through and doing the history on your building and knowing a little bit about it, knowing about the era. Um, if you play music, you know, you'll have that going on. You can do the big band music and that type of thing. Or if you know of a certain artist that visited somewhere, um, you know, do your background on it. Look at the research. Um, see what the building went through. See what the guest did. Um, we kind of know who visited the baker. So you can go back and kind of tie that into your investigation because most of the spirits you're going to come across at those locations will live during that time period. So that's just part of doing your research and your investigating. Um, going forward to the porch, to our investigation, we've done that for you. So we're going to let you know when you get there. You don't have to worry about that. But, you know, if you guys are going to a, a historic location, definitely not only do your research on the location and the paranormal activity you've seen, but do it on the building, do it on the area, do it on the community. And that'll kind of help you with your evidence to, to come forward and really be able to figure out why an EVP says what it says. So um, check that out. You guys, the Baker Hotel, um, September 21st, we're going to do that ghost walk. I'm telling you, they were catching apparitions that night. And we actually were catching EVPs and having some uh, interaction on our ovulus. And I actually had a spirit touch me putting my hand in through the window. So it's just it's amazing it is absolutely amazing and just to be there and see how big this 14-story building is and, and to be standing right next to it for somebody like me that's an architectural buff that was just awesome that was so awesome i think Dean was about ready to strangle me that night because i couldn't say how awesome it was enough that way um let's see we got about 20 more minutes i know scott double booked tonight we'll we'll see if we can get him back on another night because i had so much fun stuff i wanted to talk to him about like i didn't realize that um, his team verify was on paranormal challenge, which they did away with paranormal challenge. That was one of my favorite shows. I was hoping to be on it. <laughs> Could you imagine me on paranormal challenge? I'd probably hurt somebody. Depends on where they put me. So hopefully we'll get him back on. Um, and, and also one good thing that I did like about Scott is that he does a lot of the old school techniques, which is what we here at DNS um, use as well. And, and you guys will show you how to do that on Saturday night too. We'll have all the fun gadgets and we'll have the paranologist equipment. Um, and all the digital stuff, but we're also going to be doing some weird stuff. We're probably going to pull out a bag of chips, and we're probably going to pull out a cookie sheet, and we might pull out some baby powder, and we might pull out some dice and some dominoes. Um, you never know what we're going to pull out to see what we can have some fun with, but we will have the bells and whistles and the gadgets and the lights and all that fun stuff, too, for those of you that have never, and I know there's a few of you coming that have never been on an investigation, so we'll try to run through what we can that night. Um, I know I'm going to be crazy busy between hosting the show um, and bringing that to you guys live and then just getting everything coordinated. So bear with me Saturday night. It'll be crazy. Let me see. What else can we talk about? I'm not used to talking on my own. This is one I need. Hey, this is, uh, Kim wanted to make sure we mentioned too that the Pride House, about the Pride House. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. And I don't remember that link. Okay. You guys can look on my page and you look on Dina's page. So Pride House Jenny, we're trying to help her out. Um, insurance, of course, is going to be covering stuff, but, you know, it takes a while, and especially being a bed and breakfast, it's going to take them a while to go through um, and, and get her claim done and all that kind of fun stuff. So her main source of income was the Pride House. So we're trying to, with, the, with huge thanks going out to Dakota for setting it up and, and really being that um, representation for Jenny, God bless him. We are trying to do some donations um, sending out a link so you guys can find it, like I said, on Dina's page. Click on the link for Pride House and donate what you can. I mean, every little bit will help her. We really want to get that place rebuilt, so the more we can help her, the better. Keep in mind, you know, we're talking about, you know, like the baker being a first of its kind of the, the pool. The Pride House was the first bed and breakfast in Texas, so guys, let's show some true Texan spirit and Texan pride, and let's bring the Pride House back. Um, I hate that so much was lost. It was such an awesome, awesome location. I got to investigate it, I guess it was about three years ago. Um, cute, cute bed and breakfast, and just some of the experiences there are just phenomenal. So let's see what we can do to help Jenny get that back. 
um, get her back on her feet. And you guys keep her in your prayers too, because that was her baby. Um, and, and that was her home. So for something like that to happen, it's devastating. So let's make sure, um, share that link. Like I said, it's on the DNS page. I'll go ahead and repost it again tonight. So it's at the top of the page and you guys can share it and get the word out. Um, and let's just kind of get some help out to her as well. They may have it up. I'm not on Facebook right now, but they may have it up. If you guys do a search for the Pride House Facebook page, um, it may be out there as well. I haven't looked, but that would be another place to look for it. Um, and if you're Facebook friends with Dakota or you can get to Dakota's page, I know Dakota's got all over his page. So you guys can click on it, uh, make a donation, and then share that link as well. Um, what else have we had go on? It seems like we've just had so much weird stuff going on, you know. My son had a fire in his apartment Friday night, so I've been kind of cookie break um, this weekend and trying to get some stuff done and get organized. Um, what else has been going on in the paranormal world? I'm trying to think there was something else big other than the Pride House that's happened recently. Well, Parafest is this weekend, too, and that's a, supposed to yep. be the largest convention ever in the face of the earth or whatever. But there's like 70. The Sands, isn't it? Yeah, it's the Sands, and, and it's in Pennsylvania, Bethlehem, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. But there's like 70 just the guests, the special guests or whatever. There's 70 people there. Oh, my gosh. That's going to be huge. Yeah, you like, know what? I'd hate to be that organizer. Yeah, he's, he's pretty much bald-headed by now, I think. I was going to say, probably about ready to kill somebody and probably a, a definite alcoholic by now. I would be. I mean, it's hard putting on these events, but they're fun and they're enjoyable. But my God, some of the drama you have to put up with behind the scenes that you can't talk about is outrageous. Well, and I know we've got, let's see, we've got a lot of big stuff coming up. Let's see. We've got Phantom Fest coming up um, in October in San Antonio on the 4th and 5th. I know Fear's going to be there at that representing. I think Selena actually has a booth there for Paranologies and a. Uh, She's also a rep for the Ghost Hunter store, so you guys look her up if y'all want to get some of that equipment. Um, and then we've got, what else did I have a note of? Oh, have you guys heard about that film, The Blood Red Sky? There was like some stuff going on Facebook about it, um, being like a huge paranormal-ish type film. I haven't seen too much on it, but they're actually going to be showing that um, here in Dallas. And I don't have a location in which um, theater, but it's going to be in Dallas on the 26th of September. So that might be something to check out. Um, and then October's Fear Fest, or Phantom Fest, I'm sorry. Fear Fest. Yeah, there you go, Selena. Um, November 9th is our haunted holiday. So you guys, I'm going to keep hammering that so you guys have it in your head and you know to be there. We're going to be there along with some other fun people. So come on and we're gonna have all sorts of vendors and food you know we need to talk to giovanni about bringing some chicken fried bacon out there for that eric well we're we're, we're hitting we're, we're going to be recruiting at all the local there's a couple of i think there's a couple of county fairs between now and then and several large festival type events here in east texas um we're, we're going to be picking the cream of the crop of the food vendors yeah we need some good food we definitely need some good food you know I, i'm kind of saddened about the pride house because deegan hasn't been and we were gonna, i was going to take off a day early and we were going to go to jefferson and we were going to go to the pride house and at least let him go by and see it um and then we were going to go over to the jefferson hotel and then we were going to go to marshall and hang out in marshall for a little bit and then actually stay and do our um our event and then sunday i wanted to kind of sneak around marshall as well so i'm kind of disappointed we won't be able to go by pride house on our little road trip, but we'll still make a trip out of it and see what else is out there that we can get in trouble. You know me, I always find something. Linda's having issues with sound. Yeah, I wonder, if, she, I wonder if she's at HHM. <laughs> well, Sherry, we, we just booked our, our final speaker for... Hey, who all is speaking? Who all is speaking to you guys? Marshall's you Haunted Holidays. We y'all let that cat out of the bag? We have... Uh, Rita, Dr. Rita Louise. Yes. We have Anthony Zepeda. Anthony Zepeda. See, she's typing now. She's like Mary. If you type, oh, I, you can't... Anthony Zepeda. He wasn't at... Um, no. He wasn't at Paris. Okay. 
we have our very own Mary Gasparro. Who is that? <laughs> She's this crazy woman who talks to cats. You know, I heard that. I heard that about her. I'll have to watch her now. Right? We have Geraldine Sutton Stiff from Kelly, Kentucky, from the Kelly Hopkinsville Alien Encounter. Nice. And today we booked Lyle Blackman. No, that doesn't sound right. Cryptozoologist. He was at the Unity Fest. Who was it again? Lyle. Blackburn. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Blackburn. Isn't he the one Blackburn. that was running around with the Yeti? Yeah. Yes. Okay, gotcha. And Larry Flaxman. And Larry Flaxman. And Larry Flaxman. So now, are we doing speakers? Um, are we... Uh, oh, my God, I'm so freaking brain dead, y'all. Are we doing speakers, like, back to back? Or are y'all going to have speakers in one room, speakers in another room? How are you guys organizing stuff? We have speakers... Every other hour. Nice. So that'll give everybody a break in between. That, that not only gives a break, but that gives the speakers and everybody else a chance to mill around, check out all the vendors, check out all that craziness. Go eat the food that's going to be there, because thank God we're going to have food, because Unity Fest, that's what was killing everybody. Well, and this is the other thing, too, that everybody needs to remember. Not only can you take a haunted tour of Marshall during the day there, at dusk there's going to be a cemetery walk at dusk that's going to be awesome the two locations that are there we only have 38 VIP tickets that there's only going to be 40 people in both locations that's, that's going to be 20 awesome. each so people need to hurry up and get their VIP tickets bought um, we have the 1800s library and we have the 1901 plantation mansion and the mansion is 30. God's the mansion would be awesome. The mansion is 3,500 square feet. Neither, nice. neither location has ever been investigated by a paranormal team. These are emergency. I, I want to go to the plantation. Sure you do, because I'm going to be at the library. <laughs> oh, boo! <coughs> oh, we're not talking about Mar we're talking about Marshall. So this is what happens when you come in late on the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, who says you're in? Get out of the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Shut it. That's going to be awesome, though. Um, do you guys have the website up yet? Yes, yes, we do. It's actually running on the ticker underneath you right now. That we're going to give away to a local shelter. We're going to team up with a local grocery store there. Um, and, again, it'll be $10 off for NPS members at the door. Um, if you can bring cash, that'd be great. Otherwise, you're going to be stopping at an ATM because we have no way to accept credit cards. So keep that in mind. Um, we will be doing dinner at 7 o'clock, and I heard we're going to be having some badass chicken fried steak. Um, and, Diggin, do you remember what else we were going to have? It was the chicken fried steak, chicken fried chicken, and I think a grilled chicken, right? And so, yeah, you guys, we're going to have to talk Giovanni into this chicken fried bacon. It was so good. But anyway, we'll have a pretty good buffet there. Um, and then after that, we'll have all of our speakers. We're going to have them in two different rooms. And then we will start off with our investigation. Um, we will have lotto tickets on sale from the time that you get there to just before the investigation starts. And we'll also have a silent auction. And we've got lots and lots of cool stuff that's been donated to us for this. So you guys can check that out. Um, during the investigation, starting at 10 o'clock, you guys, we're going to go live with DNS Live on location. Um, bring you a little bit of that. You get to watch some of the camera footage. And then we're also going to talk with uh, Mike Roberts and some of the other speakers uh, during the night and kind of do a little interview for that. So we're waiting on kids. Kids are going to send us some brochures. They ran out of banners I heard today, but they are going to be pushing our event on their website. So you guys can check it out there as well. Um, so you guys come out and support a really good charity, kids, kids. We've got some bad news in, in our family last week. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to DNS Live. It's Wednesday night. Uh, we're kind of getting some things put together tonight, so we'll go over a couple of announcements. I'm kind of worn out. We've got our charity event coming up this weekend, so 
we've been wrapping up some last minute things for you guys. So if you have not gotten your tickets yet, let's just start at the very beginning. We are doing a charity dinner and investigation Saturday night at the porch in Burleson. We've combined the two nights into one. Uh, it's going to be a little bit easier for people. Friday night seemed to have been a little bit of a struggle for some people to get in from out of town. So we are changing it to Saturday night. You can get your tickets online at DFW. Uh, what is it? DFW Dinner Ghost Hunt dot Eventbrite.com. Sorry, I didn't write it down. I've been copying and pasting all day. I think I, you think I know it by now. It's $65 for your ticket online. If you're an NPS member, it's $55. If you get your ticket at the door, it will be $75. So you want to make sure you get them online. We will be giving $5 off if you bring two, two canned goods for you.